Hello and welcome. I am Dr. Neil Joshi. Welcomes you to my series Learn Radiology with Dr. Neil Joshi. Today's topic is on MRI physics and that is also a simple pro simple topic that is the signal production. However, we will know how much basic physics is involved in this signal production. Before we start, disclosure, acknowledgement and disclaimers. This is a educational series meant for educational purposes only and not for commercial purpose. We have used almost all material in this which is going on in our department for teaching purpose for many years. However, some of it is borrowed from the net but we confirm that it is royalty free. With that brief, we get going to our lecture. Today's topic is MRI signals. Now, magnetic resonance imaging uses the body natural magnetic properties to produce detailed images from any part of the body. For imaging purposes, the hydrogen ions, a single proton is used. Why? Because it is abundant, it is there in all tissues of body and we can get it easily available. So, if we can image the hydrogen, we can practically image any tissues of the body and human body has got 75 percent of water. So, that is another important thing and MRI technique make best use of it. We have seen that why hydrogen because of abundant availability and second thing in different tissues it is present in different concentrations. Now, the hydrogen proton can be linked to the planet earth spinning on its axis with a north south pole. Now, there are all hydrogen, they act like a tiny magnets. They are millions, millions and millions in the body. They are subjected to earth's magnetic field which is from north pole to south pole. Is it that all are aligned in that? The answer is no, all are not aligned and that is why there is no net magnetization. Since all are randomly arranged, there is no net magnetization. However, some of them are aligned with a north to south pole. In this respect, it behaves like a small bar magnet. Under normal circumstances, these hydrogen protons or a small bar magnets spin in a body with their axis randomly aligned. When the body is placed in a strong magnetic field such as MRI scanner, now, 1.5 Tesla if we take into consideration and if we take into consideration earth magnetic field, 1.5 Tesla has got 25,000 times more than magnetic power than magnetic power of the earth. So, it is 25,000 times stronger. Now, we are putting our body into that. When the body is placed in a strong magnetic field such as MRI scanner, the axis all this proton will line up. This uniform alignment creates a magnetic vector oriented along the axis of MRI scanner. MRI scanner comes in a different field strength usually between 0.5 to 1.5 but nowadays 3 Tesla are becoming more and more common due to its added advantages. When additional energy in the form of a radio wave is applied to the magnetic field, the magnetic vector is deflected. Whose magnetic ref, uh, vector? The tiny magnets of the hydrogen in the body. They will get reflected and the radio wave frequency that causes the hydrogen nuclei to resonate, it depends on the element sort that is hydrogen in this case and strength of the magnetic field. Now, there are two factors in it. One is strength of magnetic field and second is time duration. Now, here we are applying the external magnetic energy that is again a sort of energy. The strength of the magnetic field can be altered electronically from head to toe using a series of radiant coils and by altering the local magnetic field by these small increments, we can create different slices of body with response to different frequencies applied because we receive a different signal from the body. So, what we do is we apply different signals 
we receive them and we project them. When the radio frequency source is switched off, the magnetic vector returned to its resting phase. What was initially, they were random. Then we put them in a large magnet. Then what happened was, they all aligned according to the magnetic field of a large magnet. Now what we have done is, we have switched off the magnetic source. So what will happen? When the radio frequency source is switched off, the magnetic vector returns to its resting state or their initial state. And this causes a signal because they have absorbed the energy. Once they are trying to go to their original state, they will emit that energy and that is caught by the signals or that is a signal for MRI and that is then post-processed. It is this signal which is used to create MRI images. However, there are a series of implementation in between. Different lecture covers them. The receiver coils are used around the body part in the question to act as an aerial to improve the detection of the emitted signal. So, what it does it? It gathers the signal, it acts as an effective method to gather the signal and feed it to the computer. The intensity of the received signal is then plotted on the grayscale and cross-sectional images are built up. But is it so simple? The answer is no. Multiple transmitted radio frequency pulses can be used in the sequence to emphasize particular tissues of abnormalities. A different emphasis occurs because different tissues relax at a different rate when the transmitted radio frequency pulse is switched off. What we are interested? We are interested in looking different tissues in a different way. If tissues has to look different on the screen, they should have different properties, they should behave differently and that is what exactly is happening. When we are applying the external magnet, the tissues will change, then they will regain and this process is a tissue characteristic and whatever they emit, that is a MRI signal. The time taken for the protons to fully relax is measured in two types. The first is the time taken for the magnetic vector to return to its resting state and the second is the time needed for axial spin to return to its resulting resting stage. An MR examination is thus made up of a series of pulse sequences. Different tissues such as fat and water have different relaxation times and can be identified separately otherwise both will look same that do not happen, should not happen because of the different characteristic. By using a fat separation pulse sequence for example, the signals from fat will be removed leaving only the signals from any abnormality lying within it. How it is done, how it is achieved is a topic of different lecture separately covered is available. Do visit our YouTube channel for that. Most diseases manifest themselves by an increase in the water content. So, MRI is sensitive test for detection of these diseases. Edema, swelling of tissues are the initial manifestations of any disease and our MRI system is sensitive to this hydrogen which is in the form of edema or in the form of tissue swelling or any uh, products these have resulted or they have emitted. The exact nature of pathology can be more difficult to ascertain for example, infections and tumor because at first look they look similar. However, how they are differentiate, one thing is by careful analysis of image by a radiologist or second is applying different sequences or take into consideration advantage of their different type of contrast enhancement. So, these all things are important along with the signal. There are no known biological hazards of the MRI because unlike X-rays and computer tomography, MRI uses radiation in radio frequency range. There is a lecture available in which we have covered radio frequency waves, how it starts from a totally harmless like what we are seeing in the bulb 
to a totally destructive like gamma ray. All these frequency ranges are different. Once that they are different, how they behave is a topic we are covered in some different lecture. Do cover, do visit it. It is an interesting lecture. Pacemaker, metallic clips and metal bulbs can also be dangerous in MRI scanner because of their potential movement number one, number two. They can alter the signal or they can interfere with a signal by creating magnetization. Now, metal joint prosthesis can cause variable problems. Some of them may cause just a distortion of the image closer to the metal or some may cause the more serious effects. As the days are advancing, we are getting implants more and more MRI compatible. However, patient might have used the implant which is not MRI compatible. In that case, it should not, patient should not be subjected to MRI examination and that care is taken before putting patient in the scanner. MRI department always check for implants, then metal objectives for its safety. Safe information also available. All this information is available on my channel or internet. Those who are interested can refer to Mushir is their choice. Now, how does MRI makes a 3D images? 3D image acquisition is another different topic we have covered in other lecture. Usually, the images are two dimensional, whereas the MRI images are usually presented in a slice from top to bottom. However, using a sophisticated computer calculating, these two dimensional slices can be joined together to produce a three dimensional model of the area of interest. Now, there are two methods in the, this again. One thing you can stack multiple two dimensional images over one another to create a 3D volume or you can directly create a 3D volume. How is a topic of different lecture. Now, this is called as 3D MRI and is discussed in different lectures. With that, we are coming to end of lecture. I thank you for giving me your valuable time. Please visit our website. For the sake of convenience, we have divided this topic in small, small lectures. However, it is always beneficial to find out some doubt from one lecture and refer to the other lecture to get the doubts clear. That is the basic aim of our educational series. Thank you, goodbye and take care. See you again in next lecture.